Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the Minimum Equipment List, MEEL. By the end of the video you will know what the Minimum Equipment List is and what problem solves during the day operation of the nightline pilot. Ok, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot. Consider subscribing to the channel because I'm uploading lots of new content every week. If you subscribe, you will not miss the next one. Ok, without further ado, let's talk about the minimum equipment list. The minimum equipment list is a manual that the airline pilots have on board, ok, that solves a simple problem. Let's say you are boarding the plane and then suddenly you have an uh, equipment or instrumentation or a system that it is not working, ok, the first question that you should ask yourself, can I dispatch with that problem? Can I actually perform the flight with that instrumentation, with that system or with that equipment that is not working? So the minimum equipment list solves that problem because the MEEL is an manual that you've got on board that actually tells you if you can dispatch or if you can perform that flight with that specific problem. Ok, so as you can see, if you are on board and then suddenly you have a problem such as, uh, for example, the radio altimeter stopped working suddenly while you are boarding the plane, the first thing that you should do, check your MEEL and see if you can actually dispatch. Ok, the minimum equipment list takes this as a reference the MMEL, the Master Minimum Equipment List. But what is it? So when the aircraft manufacturer builds up the plane, they make this list, okay, and they will prove to the authority that the aircraft can be safely dispatched with that specific equipment that is not available or is in op, okay. So the aircraft manufacturer performs this master minimum equipment list that then is approved by the authorities such as the FAA or the EASA. Okay? But not all the aircraft types are created equals, because if you take, for example, the Boeing 737 operated by the Southwest and the Boeing 737 operated by Norwegian Air, you will see that the equipment that they have on board are different. Okay? So the, the aircraft, even though it's still a Boeing 737, okay, the equipment that we've got on board can be different. Okay? Some operators, they may have, let's say, a full Keep the Boeing 737 and some other operators they have not a fully equipped Boeing 737. For example, I've never flown a Boeing 737 with a head up display. However, some operators they have the Boeing 737 with the head up display. So, as you can see, depending on your operations, depending where you operate, depending on the company procedures, they may have a different equipment and different systems on board. So, what the, what the operator does, they took this master minimum equipment list, as we discussed earlier, and they actually do their own minimum equipment list that takes into account their system, their operations and the area where they, actually, where they actually operate, ok? So it is important to understand the minimum equipment list, the one made by the operator, ok, for their specific operation, their specific aircraft, has to be as restricted as the MMEL or more restricted, ok? So, we need to understand that the master minimum equipment list is the master document and the minimum equipment list is the document that the operator takes take into, the, uh, into consideration the master minimum equipment list for their operations. Okay? In my career, it happens to me many times that we were boarding the plane and then suddenly there was a problem with, us, with equipment, with a system, with an instrumentation and so on. So the first thing you do, you take the minimum equipment list and you check if you can dispatch. Okay? For example, you're boarding the plane and then some, suddenly the auto brakes stop working. Okay, you've got the information on board, the indication that the auto brake is not working, that is in op. So what can you do? Are you going to guess? No, you just take the minimum equipment list and you read through the minimum equipment list. So in the minimum equipment list you have the list of the equipment, you go into the auto brake section and in there, okay, equipment by equipment, you have multiple informations, okay? The goal of the minimum equipment list is to allow the pilots to operate and dispatch the flight with some systems or equipment that are not operative, okay? This is very important because if, without the minimum equipment list, if you have a problem, you should ground the plane, okay? And by grounding the plane, as soon as you have a small problem, you can see that that could have a big impact on the uh, economy, on the, on the revenue of the company. So the minimum equipment list is very important that you follow that, okay? A very important thing to understand is that even though the minimum equipment list tells you that you can actually dispatch the plane with that system, the last word stands with the captain. A problem with the minimum equipment list is that the minimum equipment list doesn't take into account the multiple failures. So for example, you are boarding the plane, then you suddenly you have a problem with the auto brake, and then you have a problem with a generator, okay? So let's say that for that flight, 
you, you check both items on the minimum keeping list and tells you that you can actually dispatch. Okay, but the last word stands with you, with the captain. So you should use common sense, think about that, and um, think about, can I, is it really safe to dispatch even though the minimum keeping list is telling me I can? So it is important to all the time, not just follow the book blindly, say, okay, the minimum keeping list says yes, so I go. No, take into account that sometimes you have to use common sense and take a more restrictive uh, actions and more restrictive measures compared to the ones of the uh, official documents, okay? A normal thing is that if you're not sure, talk to your engineering, talk to, to the mental, talk to maintenance, and talk to them, okay? Try to get a very informative decision before taking a guessing decision, okay? It is very important. So if you have an inoperative item, what you've got to do is go into the minimum keeping list. In the minimum keeping list, you will find that you've got lots of information, such as the class of the equipment. Okay, so depending on the severity of the problem, because it's not the same as having a radio altimeter that is not working or a generator that is not working. Okay, it's a, as you can see, the severity of the problem is a lot different. Okay, so depending on the import of the safety implication of that equipment that is inoperative, you have a different class, okay? And the class tells you within how many days you should actually rectify the problem. Not you as a pilot, but the maintenance of the company, okay? Another important information that you found inside the minimum equipment list is the number of items installed and the number of items that you require to dispatch, okay? So for example, the autopilot, if you have got two autopilots on board and one is inoperative, you will find that Installed two required one. That means that to dispatch under the minimum keeping list, you only need one uh, autopilot. Okay, so but then you have a lot of restrictions that are, are all indicated below this information, the minimum keeping list that tells you that, for example, if you're performing a low visibility approach or an auto line, you cannot perform that with a single autopilot. So it is very important that you actually read all the information that are inside the minimum keeping list. Okay. What I want to make sure that is clear is that once you read how many you have installed and once you read how many you uh, you need to have in order to dispatch under the me yet, you don't close the book and you go if you have the minimum equipment, okay? Because even though you might need less equipment than you have installed, you should still apply the operational procedures that are indicated in the minimum equipment list. So as you can see, there are some procedures that you should apply when dispatching under the minimum equipment list, okay? These procedures that you can have procedures applicable only to the flight crew and procedures applicable only to maintenance, okay? When you've got a problem that only requires the flight crew to take a corrective uh, action, a corrective procedures, you can dispatch under that MEL because you don't need maintenance. However, sometimes depending on the severity of the problem, depending on the system that is in op, you go through the MEL of that system and you will see that some procedures are required from the pilot and some procedures are required from the maintenance before you can actually dispatch with that problem. So when these procedures are required for from the maintenance guys, okay, from the engineering, in that case, you cannot dispatch until that procedure has been implemented, okay? So what happens is that you have a problem, you take the MEL, you go, you're gonna read the MEL part of the specific system, you will see if you can dispatch and you will see what procedure you should uh, implement, okay? If the procedures are applicable only to the pilot, oh, here we go. So we can actually apply these procedures and dispatch the plane. However, if you need to apply maintenance procedures as well, you need to make sure that these guys, the maintenance guys, they come on board, they will implement their procedures as well, okay? So as you can see, it is very important to read through the minimum keeping list and understand exactly what the minimum keeping list is telling you, okay? And as well as it is very important to understand that the minimum keeping list is applicable until the commencement of the flight, okay? The, commence no, the commencement of the flight is when they actually, the aircraft can move under its own power, okay? So the minimum keeping list is applicable from the time you get on board, you prepare the flights, you board the plane, you start the pushback, you start the engine, by the moment you actually add in trust for taxi, that is the moment from where the minimum keeping list is not applicable anymore. However, I strongly recommend you to uh, use common sense because if you have a problem during the taxi out that will, uh, will compromise the safety of your flight, you should check your MEN, okay? Because you're still on the ground and sometimes it's always better to, sometimes it's better to come back, okay, to the stand, especially if you are flying out of a place where you have maintenance, okay, where you have guys that can actually check the plane. A typical example is, let's say we are taxiing out in our destination, in our destination we have rain, the runway is wet, we've got thunderstorms and so on, and when you are taxiing out, you've got the anti-skid is in up, okay, suddenly your aircraft is telling you that the anti-skid is in up, okay. 
In that case, it's always wise, for example, to check the MEL, because if the MEL tells you that you cannot go into a wet run with anti-skid is enough and the, and the cure age is telling you that you can actually go, maybe you should take into consideration the things, okay? You, should, you might think, okay, maybe if I come back and I ask the, maint the maintenance guy, guys to check the plane and check the anti-skid maybe they can fix the plane and then everything is going to be fine okay so that's why it is very important to take into consideration the MEL even if they are not applicable in order to take a more informative action okay a more, a more informative uh, decision okay because this is very important okay we don't only blindly fa follow the manuals follow the rules we need always to use as a captain of the plane as a commander of the plane you should always use common sense so I hope you now understand what the minimum keep and list is and why it is so important. If you have any question, leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also go to paloplan.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.